Southwest 3260 only tired, runway 24 right to last. This video is going to demonstrate how to use the departure clearance service of the Fans GUI software. If you haven't downloaded Fans GUI yet, make sure you do that from the Pilot Edge Pilot Center. In the download process, you might get a security message that says it's not commonly downloaded. Do you want to continue? If you do, just navigate to the little carrot that you see here and hit keep or something similar. You're only getting this because it hasn't been downloaded millions and millions of times. Therefore, your web browser and your computer just don't recognize it. Next, open up the download, you'll find the Fans GUI app folder. Make sure you take this file out of the zip folder and save it somewhere on your computer. After you've done that, double click the Fans GUI app folder and you'll find the Fans GUI exe or application file within the Fans GUI app folder. This is the file you're actually gonna have to run every time. So I would encourage you to make a shortcut of this file and put it maybe on your desktop or just somewhere where you can easily access it later. Regardless of if you make that shortcut or not, you need to open up the application file one way or another. I'll use my shortcut and then Fans GUI will launch. Now, if you got that security notification when you downloaded it, you might get another one from Windows here for the exact same reason, that it's just not a commonly downloaded file. Windows doesn't recognize it. If you do get the notification, just select more info and run anyways. This video is gonna be demonstrating the departure clearance portion of Fans GUI, or DCL as it's called. And in basic terms, that will allow all jets or turboprops who are using Fans GUI to pick up their IFR clearance electronically at a select list of airports. Now the list of airports mirrors the list of the real world. So you just have to know where to look to find out if DCL is available at your departure airport. The very first step you wanna do is to file your flight plan on the Pilot Edge website as normal. When you're filing and you wanna use DCL, make sure you check the box in the flight plan and then file as normal. Once your plan is filed, go ahead and load up the simulator and launch Fans GUI if it's not already. Now Fans GUI is just going to run as its own application. It's going to either sit in front of your simulator if you have a single monitor or if you have a dual monitor setup, you can move it off to a second monitor. If you only have that single monitor, it's no big deal. You can just minimize it and bring it back up as you need it. Once you load it up in the cockpit and your airplane's electronics are turned on, Entering your flight ID. This is going to be the call sign that you've connected under and filed under. Today I'm using November 9021 Victor November, but this would also be your airline call sign if you're flying, for instance, Delta 123, you'd put in DAL 123. It's just whatever you're connected to the network as. Once you've done that, you can attempt to select Send Logon. Now, if you get a logon denied message, as you see here, that's because your clearance is not ready yet. And that is why ideally you're doing this at the beginning of your cockpit preparation. You don't want to get all the way through your cockpit prep and be ready to push back and be doing this and realize your clearance isn't ready yet. So by checking it early on, you'll know if ATC's gotten to it yet. If you get a logon denied, that just means your flight plan hasn't been looked at by ATC. You can just continue with your cockpit prep and maybe check again in another minute or two. If you get to the point where you are ready to push back and you've waited several minutes and you still are getting the logon denied, feel free to just call up clearance delivery on the radios like you're used to. You can still use radios, it's no big deal. However, hopefully you will at some point get a successful logon, which will indicate your clearance is ready, and you'll see that by having it say logged on to KUSA, which indicates you're in the correct system. At this point, it just becomes a little waiting game. Uh, you just continue with your cockpit preparation, prepare your flight, and your clearance should be coming momentarily. So during this waiting game, you'll know when your clearance is available because you'll hear an audible notification that'll sound like this. That indicates you have an ATC message. You can also see that Fans GUI has an ATC message available for you. Simply select the button next to the ATC message to see what your message is, and it's likely gonna be your IFR clearance. Now there are three different use cases that you can expect to see from an electronic clearance that comes through Fans GUI through DCL. The first one is cleared as filed. That simply means that you are cleared via exactly what you filed. It was a good flight plan that you sent, and they're gonna send that to you in a similar form that you would expect to hear over the radios. The second use case we'll look at in just a minute is a route amendment. That means that somewhere in the route, there's been a change, whether it might be a star at the very end of the route, or they're adding in a few VORs or airways in the middle of your route, maybe even just a SID change at the beginning. Somewhere in the route, there's been an amendment. We'll look at that in just a moment. The final use case is gonna be a full route clearance. This means that ATCs completely change your entire route. You are getting a full route clearance from start to finish. In today's example, we're flying from Sacramento to Los Angeles. We're gonna start off by taking a look at that first use case that cleared as filed, and you're gonna be able to determine what kind of clearance you received based on how it looks in Fans GUI, based on that message you received. So this one says cleared to Los Angeles Airport, fills three, that's a SID. Friant is our transition, FRA, then is filed, maintain 9,000, expect flight level 370 after five minutes, departure frequency. Now, if you look in the top right, you'll see we're one slash two. That means we're on page one of two. You need to go down to that next button, which is just to the lower right of the display screen. 
and select next to see the remainder of the clearance which happens to just be our squawk code squawk 4020. Now at this point we have our response items that we can see once you get to the final page once you re read all pages of your clearance you'll be able to read your response items. Now the first response item is accept that's fairly self-explanatory you're accepting the clearance and that will send the accept message to the controller. The second response item is standby. Standby is important because your clearance will actually time out if you don't get to it in time. For instance, if you need a little bit more time to read it over, uh, if you're just not quite ready to accept or reject it yet, and you just need some more time, just select that standby button. You'll see that standby in the top right of the display screen. That will give you as much time as you need. If you don't do anything and you just let it run for about a minute or two, it will automatically reject and you're gonna have to call up ATC on the clearance delivery frequency and explain what happened. Finally, reject. Reject is you're rejecting the clearance for one reason or another. At that point, it's gonna ask you what the reason for the reject is. You actually don't need to input a reason. You can just keep it as none. This actually mirrors the real world in the United States. The reason is not being used, so we don't use it on Pilot Edge either. So you can just keep it as none and then reject the clearance. At that point, you're gonna to have to call ATC on the clearance delivery frequency and explain what the problem was with your clearance, why you rejected it, and what you need. And then going back to that original screen, if we don't reject it, we don't select standby, or maybe we already selected standby, now we're ready to accept the clearance, we just select the accept option. You'll see in the top right it says closed, and that means that the message has been closed, the clearance is accepted, and at that point you can call ground for pushback or taxi whenever you're ready. Now we're going to look at the second type of clearance you can get from DCL, and that is a cleared to via clearance. It's basically a root amendment where ATC has changed a part of your root, but not necessarily the whole root. So this is more in depth than the cleared as filed, where it is exactly what you filed and you get your clearance for it. Now ATC has an amendment for you. So I've taken us back to the main screen. Imagine we've just logged on to Fans GUI, and we're just waiting for ATC to send us our clearance. We get the audible notification, we click the message button, and here's our clearance. Now, in the very first line here where it says cleared to Clovis via, this is a dead giveaway. This is a cleared to via or a root amendment clearance. So this tells me that something in our root has been amended. But the cleared to Clovis via is a little bit confusing because that's not our clearance limit. We're not just going to Clovis, but you need to understand what it means when it says this, is that we are cleared to Clovis via the following routing. So think of it this way, is that we file Clovis in our flight plan. ATC has now changed how we're gonna get to Clovis, but then after Clovis, everything will remain as filed. So take a look, cleared to Clovis via Foothill 3 departure, Friant transition, that's the same as what we filed, Modesto, so here's what's new, right? We didn't file Modesto. And then it says load new route to Clovis, and then it goes into the altitude information. So those plus signs where it says load new route to Clovis within the plus symbols, that's the next dead giveaway that this is a cleared to via clearance. In this case, we just have an amendment between the departure and Clovis VOR, which is CZQ. After Clovis, everything is as filed. You can see the altitude information is the same as the as filed clearance that we already looked at in the previous example. And then we need to go down and select the next page. You see our departure information, squat code. And now take a look at this portion. We didn't see this in the first example. These five dashes, and then it says SMF, that's Sacramento Airport or Departure Airport, and it's got our entire new routing. So that very first page where it says cleared to via, that will tell you what's been amended. However, when you go to page two here, you'll have your entire new routing here. So compare this to what we filed. You'll see that it's what we filed, except they've added Modesto between Friant and Clovis. Just like in the first example, we have our response items. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this clearance. And now I'm ready to call for taxi whenever I have the airplane prepped. So this brings us to the final type of clearance you might see come back from ATC, and that's a full route clearance. I've taken us back to that main screen again. Imagine we've just logged on, and we're just waiting to receive our clearance. We hear the audible notification, we go to select ATC message, and here's our clearance. Now this looks quite different from the other ones. You'll see it starts with cleared, and then it has the root right away. So this indicates a full root clearance right off the bat. Cleared, Sacramento, now this is the Sacramento VOR. This is just part of our root. So cleared, Sacramento VOR, Avenal, Santa Monica, load new route to Los Angeles Airport. You'll see that's in the plus signs. That's different than the one we just looked at, which was the cleared to via where it was saying load new route to, and it had a fix in the flight plan. By seeing load new route to Los Angeles Airport, that indicates it is an entirely new route all the way to Los Angeles Airport versus what we just looked at in the previous example, which was just an entirely new route to Clovis VOR. As we continue reading, you'll see fly runway heading, expect vectors to Sacramento VOR, maintain 9,000, 
expect. Then we got to go down and select next to get over to page two. Flight level 370, five minutes after. Departures on 127.4, squawk 4020, and we have these five dashes again. Now, once again, just like the previous example, the five dashes will precede the entirely new route. So we're cleared from the Sacramento airport, then the Sacramento VOR, Avenal VOR, Santa Monica VOR, and Los Angeles airport. That is our new route, full route clearance. This one, just as the example, didn't have any SIDs and STARS, but you could certainly get a SID or a STAR with this as well. The response items will work just like the other two examples. We can accept, stand by, or reject, and I'm going to accept this clearance, and now I can call ground whenever I'm ready to push or taxi. If you have any questions about how DCL works, or if you just have any questions about Pilot Edge in general, we invite you to join our Discord community by visiting pilotedge.net slash discord. You can interact with our staff members or any of the many Pilot Edge users that are on our Discord every single day. Be sure to like and follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date on the latest and greatest.